Hello everyone, my name is Anton and in this video I want to get into the new Apple Calendar and Apple Reminders integration with the new updates. I wanted to take another look into it just to see if it was something that I could consider replacing TickTick. So I've already done a little bit of played around with it a bit and I want to dig into some things on what's there right now and then some things that are not there that I'm currently getting in Tick Tick because spoiler alert, I still think Tick Tick is a better option. I'll talk about why and yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. So I have both the calendar app and the reminders app open. And this is going to be the first thing that I'm going to highlight as one of the things that Tick Tick excels at because it brings the calendar and the reminders it, together in a way that the calendar integration here with reminders does not. So with reminders, you can come in here and you can add in a new reminder to your timeline. We'll put that on the timeline. We can come in here and we can edit some things on the reminder, just like you can over in the reminders app. Now this is all well and, and good. You can even come in here and move things to a different day. One thing that you cannot do here is you cannot extend this reminder across the timeline. So right now it's default to take up like a 30 minute space on the calendar here. And if I wanted to expand that out, it's not giving me, you know, the little pull bars at the bottom. Or if I come into it in here, let's say reminders, it gives you a reminder, but it doesn't give you a duration of time that you can set on here. If I'm missing that, maybe someone can leave a comment down below of the video and let me know if I'm missing something here. Another thing that you don't get with this particular integration is you don't get that side-by-side -side view. Like if I was to open up Tick Tick here, I can have the calendar open, then I can also have the task list right on the side. I can change through the task list as I need to. Uh, browse through different projects and areas within the application. And then if I need one of these here on the calendar, I can simply drag it to the calendar and I can come in here and I can also extend and expand the time of that, of what that task should take on the particular calendar as well. So it is pretty good in the fact that I can use this calendar. And if I had some of my scheduled events on the calendar right now, I have them all checked off. So they're not showing up here on the calendar. But if they were, I can easily go ahead and put reminders around those different events that I might have on here. Now that's pretty much it as far as the integration with the calendar. You can do this on mobile as well, but the extent of it is being able to create a reminder from the calendars app, but there's really not too much uh, planning other than clicking on the, the date and the time frame and then creating a new event from there. So you're definitely not going to get that planning aspect where like you could over in the reminder side where you can create a list and create a, as a project and then just start hammering out the different activities that will be related to that project or that area and then add times to it. So it would be nice if they had that side pane where I can just uh, bang out a bunch of uh, tasks that I would need to do for a particular project then assign those to a list, which you can do in here. If you open this up one by one, you'd be able to add these to a particular list, but then be able to drag things around from either a week or a month perspective and uh, schedule out your, your, your project. Now, if we go over into the dedicated reminders app, we also have some some new functionality here and some stuff that at least wasn't here when I looked at this product way back a few years ago and we can come in here and we can create multiple lists so let's just create a couple lists here and you do get the option of creating a standard list or a smart list so if I was to come in here and create a smart list Go ahead and see what that looks like. It gives you the option to be able to filter out different tasks that are within your uh, your Reminders app application. So based off of different criteria. So in here you can either uh, filter out things for 
uh, tag for date, for time, priority tag, uh, uh, flags, location, and for list. And you can do a combination of those things to make sure that you get the right thing within this particular smart list. And things basically as you create them in the in your um, in your different projects and your different lists, they will show up in those those smart lists. So they act somewhat similar to these little pinned uh, icons up here, where you have all or you have schedule or today. These smart lists just have certain things show up in there, and then you can even pin those up in this area. So like if I was to take a list. I can pin that up to the top. You can do the same thing with smart list as well. Now, folders is another uh, element of organization that I have over in TickTick that I like. And you don't get folders over here in the Reminders app. You do get groups. So if I was to take this and place it on top of this other list, it gives me the option to create a group for, for both of those lists. You can also go up into the menu and create a new group from there as well. Uh, but it's just as easy to create all your lists that you want and then drag and drop them on top of each other. And then if I was to create another one, let's go ahead and see if we can create that smart list here. Create smart list. Let's put something in here. Hey, test. There we go. We'll do test there and let's get rid of that one there and we'll click OK. All right, so if I was to come in there, I can easily place the smart list, standard list, and mix and match them into different groups. Now, there you cannot create or have a group within a group, so it's only one level. If I was to come in here and let's create one more list. P3, we'll make a standard one. We'll move this one there into a new group call this group two and if I want to put this group underneath this group we cannot do that so you are limited from a, a hierarchy standpoint uh, one you cannot have folders per se but you can have these different groups that you create and you can't have any um, folders with subfolders in them. One thing that you get with folders over in the, the other project management type of apps, apps or task management type of apps is the folder actually has sorting and filtering functionality of its own. And what I've noticed over here in Apple Reminders is you don't get the sorting and filtering of what shows up here on the side. So you cannot do it at this top level everything shows up over here and that are in the different lists that are there and they do show up as far as which uh, lists they are in so that's one good thing to kind of identify what list the task is in but they all show up in one list that you cannot actually filter things out at this level or sort them now going deeper into the list standpoint you can come in here and you can create sections so if we were to create section one and let's go ahead and create a section two two and one more section three section three so you come in here you can create these different sections where you can sort so let's say if we had different uh, status for the, um, the the actual task that we're putting in here where you're either creating one where it's a backlog or in in process and we can actually let's let's name them that there backlog you say in process and then you can just say done even though you already have a completed once you check them off so you could move your your task around into these different these different stages or sections and show you know a, a status for these different tasks you can also come in and you can if you take this list and let's make it a column list we'll do view and we'll change it to columns you can come in here and you can change this so that you have more of a kanban type of view so if I was to create one, two, and three, 
we have these different reminders here. If I take it, I can come and drag these around as I need to uh, between the different stages or sections as they call them here. We can move this over here and we can kind of just go back and forth. So you do get a Kanban view from here, which is pretty nice and you don't just get a list view. So on the actual uh, reminders themselves, as I mentioned before, you can add in a tag, you can add in tags and let's put test in there. And when we put in this tag here, we should be able to see that it automatically added it to this S1 that I put in the criteria that this should filter in all of the ones that have the tag for that says test on it. So from here, if I wanted to edit the actual smart list, let's do smart list info. Um, I wish it was actually a little bit more intuitive where it showed um, edit smart list or something like that there. Smart list info just didn't pop to me as the place to actually edit the, the actual smart list and the filter, but it's easy to get used to. So in here, you can see I have the tag for test in here, and this is what is uh, basically allowing this to show up here in this list, even though I created it in a different list. We can also go ahead and, as I mentioned, pin smart list and standard list to this top shortcut uh, view here so you can quickly get to these. And I'm not sure if there's a limit to these. Let's go ahead and see if we can pin this one. Let's pin that one. Let's pin this one. Doesn't seem like there's a hard limit. There possibly is, but um, yeah, I'm not going to create a bunch as many as possible here to see what that limit is. So we'll leave it at this here. You can put at least up to eight, nine different um, shortcuts up here. What's funny is that when I did the unpin, they did not go back into the group that I had them in previously. They're all sitting here at the top level now. And it seems like you have to actually put them back into the groups. So we'll move these into these groups. And what I'll do is I'll pin that again. Okay, and I didn't notice that previously, but it pulls it out of the group when you put it into this the shortcut area here. So that's just one thing to note. Now also you don't have to actually create the task on the calendar like I did previously there. If I want to come in here I can give this a date on it and let's come in here and see if I set up a reminder and then I set up a time and let's put that time at four o'clock. We'll leave it at four here and see that pops up here on the calendar here. So whether you create the, the reminder on the calendar or in the reminders app, as long as you put a time on it and a date or a date, then it will show up on the calendar. Now that's pretty much the basics and as much as you can really do with this combination. They both work pretty well and they do provide some limited capabilities for managing your tasks and your reminders. So I think many people will probably be able to use this, but if you're getting to, into any more complicated task management or you just want more organization features, I think TickTick -tick is a better option for you. And if you take a look at TickTick, -tick, you have all most of the same stuff that you can do. You can create the tasks, you can add reminders on them. But you also get the benefit within one app to also have the calendar views that you can put in here. You can see, get weekly view, you can get a day view, uh, month view, agenda, multi-days, multi-weeks, etc. So the viewing options are really nice and the integration with tasks because you can take tasks and move them over and then reschedule them anywhere you want within this calendar. You can just click in the calendar and create new ones from here, set priorities and everything. So it is a much better solution if you're looking to uh, do more advanced type of task management and event management. So that was my kind of uh, re-look into the Apple's calendar and reminders applications after the Sequoia and iOS 18 updates have come out and they put this integration in place. Again, 
nice solution nice integration some good, pretty good things that they put forth here but they're all basic so uh, if you if this fits your need then have at it you obviously do need to be on a Apple in the Apple ecosystem to leverage these. So the other benefit with Tick Tick is that it runs on basically every operating system out there from Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS. So you're not really locked into any ecosystem uh, for using that particular application. But that's gonna be it for this video. If you got value from the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, have a nice day.